Hey guys, it's John from the BusyCast. I'm joined by Sam from the Emperor's Path, who's... What are you bringing? What are you bringing? What are you bringing? Uh, What's some demons. There's some demons in there. There's something else. What's that? What's in there? Oh, uh, there's some flesh no. hounds. No, 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 it's bigger. It's like, it's like this big. It's really big. Oh, oh, that's nothing. It's just, just a warhound. Just, just a warhound. War so, I don't know what that is. He said it's fun, so it's fine. Um, and I am bringing Grey Knights. Yeah. That's it. So let's jump into it. Okay, guys. So this is my 2,000 point Grey Knight list. It actually comes out of 1,993, but meh. Uh, so Battalion Detachment, HQ slots. We have Castellan Crow, which is a stand-in model. He has as his psychic power Vortex of Doom. Then we have a Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight armor, who is my Warlord. Has the Warlord trait first to the fray and the... Um, Relic Domina Libra Demonica, and he has two Dread Fists, a Dread Knight Teleporter, Heavy Incinerator, Heavy Psy Cannon, and the Psychic Power Sanctuary. Next up, another Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight Armor. He has two Dread Fists, a Dread Knight Teleporter, Heavy Incinerator, and the uh, Psychic Power Purge Soul. Next up, we have three Five Man Strike Squads. Um, most of them are just standard Grey Knights with a Storm Bolter and a Sword. However, there is one guy in there who has a Psy Cannon instead. Then we have three Elite slots. We have three squads of Purifiers. They're all identical. We have two Incinerators in each squad and they all have the Psychic Power Gate of Infinity. Then onto Heavy Support slots, we have a Land Raider Crusader that has two Hurricane Bolters, a Multi Melter, Storm Bolter, Twin Assault Cannon. And finally, we have a Purgation Squad and that has the Psychic Power Gate of Infinity. We have four guys in there with Psy Cannons and then you have the Just Cart with nothing. And that is my list. Okay guys, so leading up the army we have got Karanak as my HQ choice. Worth mentioning as well that as per the last time I brought my demons along, uh, Karanak is not the official Karanak model, mainly because I think it looks like crap. Uh, so I'm using the Age of Sigmar model because I think it's big enough to represent a special character such as Karanak. Uh, and he gets to run around with the Flesh Hounds as well. Uh, I've got two squads of Blood Letters, pretty much standard. Uh, I've then got two five-man squads of Flesh Hounds, and then sitting at the backs there, we have got Rex Infernus Domitus, uh, the Warhound Titan, with a Titan Plasma Blast Gun and a Titan Infernus Gun. Okay guys, we have been through deployment. You just saw that in sped up fashion. We are playing a mixed Maelstrom Eternal War mission. So I'm going to a tournament next week. It's second confrontation. It's a eighth edition 40K tournament in Portsmouth. Please stop filming me, Sam. Um, so Sam's doing a live video. He is from the Emperor's Path. He's been on the channel loads. He has an Instagram account. Sam, what's your Instagram account? Uh, it's at Emperor's underscore path. There you go, follow it. Um, they also have a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. He does mainly 30k stuff, so make sure you check that out. He is a damn legend. Um, true story. So the way that this mission is going to play out is slightly different to how it would in the rulebook because it's mixed Eternal War Maelstrom, so we're playing that format. Um, I will talk you through the mission types and how it works. So the mission we're playing is the first mission from the tournament. Um, objective one, which is Eternal War, is securing control. Essentially, that means there are two Eternal War mi uh, mission objectives, which are objective marker one and two. They are each worth three victory points at the end of the game. And objective two, the Maelstrom, is cleanse and capture. The deployment is predetermined. It's Dawn of War. And the way that it works out is we disregard any deployment map stuff because it's already predetermined. We roll off for objective placing and whoever rolls highest starts placing the first objective. The person who placed the last objective, which was me, picks deployment zones. I obviously picked the table half closest to us. And then it works as it currently works in the rulebook. 
um, so not as per the new rules that will be coming out. Basically, the person who finishes placing their units first gets first turn. However, you do have the opportunity to seize the initiative. In terms of tactical objectives, no more than three tactical objectives may be scored a turn and random points uh, from objective cards are changed. So D3 becomes two and D3 plus three becomes four. Um, and if you cannot achieve a card, you redraw it, um, which is something that we play as a house rule anyway on this channel. So in terms of our objective placement, Sam, do you want to talk us through what we've got starting from this side? Yeah, of course. So over here we've got objective number six. Right, yeah, that's just Maelstrom. Uh, over here we've got objective two. Cool, so that's going to be one of our Eternal War objectives, yeah. Uh, we've got objective number five in here by the statue. Yeah. As Gwyn said, you must always Always, play. always next to the statue. Uh, you've got objective marker one back here hidden behind the Visicast crate. Yeah, another Eternal War one. Uh, you've got objective marker three just over here. Yep. And then you've got objective marker four just over here. Nicely done. Talking through um, deployment then, Sam, do you want to talk through what you've done? You've finished first, so what have you done and why? Uh, so if I start over here, mm -hmm. uh, I've got the blood letters uh, up on this mound here, and I've got the flesh hounds over here. I've got some blood letters sat behind here as well. We've got Rex, the warhound sitting up here. He's mainly there to scare John more than anything else. I think else. it's working. <laughs> um, working. And then you've got a squad of flesh hounds and Karanak sat back here as well. Uh, mainly looking towards the objectives as John would say last time we played at confrontation it was very seriously about the objectives more than smashing your opponent in the face. Correct. Uh, in terms of my deployments I took the age-old approach of putting his muffs enough and uh, wow, of not speaking properly. I took the age old approach of putting as much stuff I can in deep strike reserve to see where Sam is placing to give me an opportunity to counter deploy. And once I'd done that, we had a purgation squad placed just down here. Uh, and then we had the Land Raider Crusader, I want to say. I can't remember which variant it is. The one with 16 transport capacity. And in there, we have three squads of five purifiers and we have Castellan Crow. Um, I realised I probably haven't deployed in the best way possible, but this mission is also serving the purpose of me learning a little bit before going to the second confrontation, making mistakes now so that I don't make them when I get to the tournament. But that's it in terms of deployment and in terms of the mission. You guys know what's, know what's happening now. So we are going to roll to see if we can seize the initiative because that Titan will delete two units a turn with great ease. The moment of truth. It is time to attempt to seize the initiative off Sam. I didn't deploy as well as I should have done. I know there wasn't much to choose from, and I'll explain that in a minute. You'll probably see why, but six, here it is. Oh, a one-off. I need it so badly that immediately I'm gonna spend a command point to get a four, god damn it. One command point down, and unfortunately we did not have first turn, which I got over to Chaos Demons, turn one. So we're on Chaos Demons turn one for objectives. It's quite a nice haul. We have behind enemy lines, hold the line and defend objective three. Objective three is just there. So Sam will get that uh, if he holds it for both his turn and my turn. In terms of movement, very straightforward. Sam, do you want to talk us through what's happened? Yeah, um, basically because I need to keep three of my units in my deployment zone, I've kept the squad of blood letters, the flesh hounds and the squad of blood letters back there all the way back uh, to try and get that victory point. Uh, I've then moved and advanced with Karanak and the Flesh Hounds. Karanak got 15 and the Flesh Hounds got 13. And then Rex has moved forward because I'm A, trying to scare John and B, also want to try and uh, get behind enemy lines in the next turn. Yeah, and Rex's movement is 24. If he chose to advance, it would go up to 36. Indeed. Obviously, however, obviously he wouldn't be able to fire weapons. His weapons aren't assault, so. It's worth um, not advancing and getting the defend and killing me. So, we'll move over to shooting. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire the plasma blast gun at the Land Raider. You have to, so you have to announce all the weapons before you shoot them. Oh, okay. So uh, you'd have to, yeah. So the plasma pl blast gun's gonna go here and the Infernus is gonna go over here at the uh, little dicks. Okay, fingers crossed the Land Raider survives, I doubt it. Uh, so it's a macro 2d6, but macro doesn't matter because you've got no other Titanics on the board. Yep. So 2d6 
This is for the first weapon into the Land Raider. Into the Land Raider. So, so it's six. six shots. So six dice. So he's hitting on twos uh, and it's strength 10. Okay. Oh, they all hit. Please get those ones and twos. Just the one one. Oh, God. Uh, You're thinking about using command point, aren't you? Yeah. You evil, evil man. Command point. Yeah, yeah. serves you right. Uh, so, okay. Minus four AP. I have a two plus save. Taking me down to six up. Uh, they're four damage as well. So I roll the this first and then the damage goes through. So sixes. Oh, we have one six, giving us one, two, three, four. Four times four 16. is 16. It has 16 wounds. <laughs> so I am going to use a command point to please God. Please God. Emperor, protect me. Oh yes. no, the Land Raider in one shot is gone. That's the end of that. Um, so that's that sorted. Yeah. Uh, we now need to figure out how they get out. Okay, I need to roll for the models disembarking. So the models disembark first and then the transport disappears. So the first squad of purifiers, on ones we lose models. It does say, wait, so I just want to read this. If a transport is destroyed, any units embarked within it immediately disembark. Before the transport model is removed, uh, but you must then roll one dice for each model you just set up on the battlefield. For each roll of one, a model that disembarked, brackets, your choice is slain. That matters because I don't want to roll them separately. Roll for Castellan Crow and he dies when I could allocate it to just the bog standard um, Grey Knight. So I rolled five. We need to roll an additional uh, 11. So it's an additional 11 dice. Uh, we have one, one. So I'm going to remove one purifier with a halberd. The rest are all going to disembark and then we shall remove the land raider. Okay, one model has been slain. Other than that, I have disembarked everything and I've disembarked it slightly to this side so that I'm out of charge range. Now we need to resolve the wounds against the other squad, the squad of uh, the purgation squad just here. Okay, so the other gun into the purgation squad. So these automatically hit, but it's 4d6. Oh my god. I like these dice, I don't know why Darren had an issue with them. Yeah. So it's strength <laughs> 7, so it's wounding me on 3s, it's not double. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to roll 10 and then we'll roll the additional 7. So rolling to wound on 3s. Okay, I'm going to roll to save these first because it's fairly likely that these will wipe me out anyway. Uh, it was minus 3 AP, yes. so I get a save on a 6. No, uh, it's essentially that's whole squad dead. So that's 5 failed wounds, I only have 1 wound each, even though it's 4 damage. So boop, dead. First blood goes to Sam from Emperor's Path. Okay, end of Demon's turn one. Behind enemy lines has not been secured. Hold the line has for one VP, and we are halfway towards defend objective three. So Demons are currently on one victory point. Sorry, they are currently on two because they have first blood. For Grey Knights, turn one, we have Secure Objective 6, Secure Objective 5, and Psychic Communion. Objective 5 is just here, which I'll show you there. However, Rex is within about, I think, five inches of him. So I was going to deep strike in there to grab that. However, obviously, I can't deep strike within nine inches of an enemy model. So he has prevented me from grabbing that. Um, and then Objective 6, is that that one there? Yeah, so I will get that one at least, which is very good. Um, in terms of my movement then, there's been a lot of deep striking because that's where a majority of my um, stuff has come from. So I've sort of spread it out. My plan is to wipe out Sam's entire army or near enough his entire army this turn, just leaving the Titans. I just have to deal with that. It's one thing I can focus on. Admittedly, I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to kill it and it can definitely delete two squads a turn. Um, so. I'm going over here, gonna try and get that objective, kill both of those guys. The Grand Masters allow me to reroll ones for the Grey Knights, and they are firing four shots each because they have Stormbolt as Rapid Fire 2 and they're within half range. Down here, Purifiers, I was gonna run away from the Titan, but he has a 24 inch move, 
and his guns are a ridiculous range and he can charge and all that sort of stuff. So there's no point in me running away. I'm not gonna get away. So instead I've moved things towards him just to bring a little bit more firepower. Admittedly that firepower is probably not gonna do anything but it's better to try than to not try. These purifiers down here have not moved. The reason being they have gate of infinity so I'm gonna move them in a second in the psychic phase anyway. Uh, the idea at present is to move them over here to get some more shots on the hounds down here because they're the only thing I don't have targeted at present. Over here we have the warlord who has the, um, oh sorry I need to swap those two over. Actually it doesn't really matter too much. Um, we have another nemesis uh, dread knight grandmaster so all those squads next to him are re-rolling ones to hit which is useful we have five guys next to karanak to put pump shots into him we have another five guys ready to pump shots into the bloodletters they should die fairly quickly because they never five plus save so that's it in terms of all of my movement we'll get over to the psychic phase Okay, we're going to start over here. I'm going to roll outside of guy brush for this psychic test. We're just going to roll here. Gate of Infinity on these guys has a warp charge value of 6. So it goes off with essentially 10 because my Grey Knights are in a detachment of pure Grey Knights. They get plus 1 to deny and plus 1 to casting. So they have used Gate of Infinity, which means essentially they deep strike right now. So through the power of editing, beep, boop. If that's not a reason for you guys to subscribe, I don't know what will be. So that's that uh, cast, and that's one power cast for the card I have, Psychic Communion, next Psychic Power. There is a fair amount of stuff going on here. We're starting with Castellan Crow. He's using Psychic Channeling for one command point. It's a stratagem, so I'm now down to three. And he is using that for Vortex of Doom. Vortex of Doom has a warp charge value of eight, but it does additional things if it is cast on a 12 plus. So I roll dice and I pick the two highest, unfortunately. That is still a fail. I think I'm going to re-roll one of the dice. I might as well. So another command point. Rolling the two. Oh, outside of guy brush. For a five, giving me a total of nine. Goes up to ten. So that does... Uh, let's just have a quick look. D3 mortal wounds. So on Rex, D3 mortal wounds for three. Now, Rex has a void shield or something. Basically, yeah. he gets to roll saves against mortal wounds and at his current profile, it's on a four plus. Wounds. So Sam's so gonna roll three dice. On four pluses, he ignores them. So he ignores two, so he has taken one mortal wound. That is the first wound off of Rex. We need more of those. <laughs> Crow can also cast smites. So he can cast two psychic powers. So he's gonna cast smite. Uh, goes off, can't deny it. So it's one mortal wound, so one roll of a four plus to deny. Here we go, see if we can get rid of it. Yep. Next up we have, so that's three powers cast for my card. Next up, this squad of purifiers. Casting it, so four plus. They're only doing one damage on smite because they have Brotherhood of Psychers. So Rex has taken another mortal wound. This squad of purifiers goes off. So four plus, see if you can deny it. Yep, cool. So we have cast in total so far, one, two, three, four, five powers, so we're near six. Next up, we're over here. So this guy who is my Warlord is casting Sanctuary, has a casting value of six, see if we get it off. So yeah, it goes off, you can deny it. So it's gone off with four, five, six, seven, plus one, eight. So the Hounds can deny it. You roll two dice, see if you can beat me. So Sam needs to roll eight or above. Actually, no, you need to beat, so you need to roll nine or above. Uh, yep, yeah, denied, nicely done. Cool, so Sanctuary has not gone off. However, he's gonna attempt to cast Smite. Smite will be on the blood letters because they are the closest. Again, walk charge value of five. Goes off with a six. They can only attempt to die one, correct? Yes. Cool, so there are three mortal wounds on the blood letters. The three models are dead, essentially. They've got a five up invon. Doesn't matter, mortal wounds go through invon save. Oh, does it? That's oh, yeah. all right. Uh, and you I can... choose which come off, yeah. Ooh. So Sam hasn't played much 8th edition because he's moved <laughs> over to Horus Heresy because he is a heretic. Uh, next up, this squad of Grey Knights just here, casting Smite, and that'll be going on the Hounds. I'll use this guy to cast it. So see if it goes off. Goes off on a 8. So again, three mortal wounds. How many wounds do they have each? Flesh Hounds, two Ooh. wounds each. So one model dies and one model is down to one wound. Additionally, that has taken me over the six powers I needed for Psychic Communion, giving me two victory points for that card. Okay, over this side we have, so there's going to be a fair amount of dispelling. This squad here is going to cast Smite, closest model is Karanak. 
So it goes off on on a five because they get plus one to their roll. So see if you deny it. If you want to deny it. Uh, so what do I need? I need more than you five. You need a six, basically, on two dice, yeah. Yep, denied. So that smite did not go off. Then here we have my uh, Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight. Um, Purge Soul has a casting value of five. Pick a visible enemy unit within 12 inches. Um, and then we both roll off, essentially. It's a leadership-based thing. I'm guessing all their leadership is 10. Can we check their leadership? Yeah, I'll pick. Well, it depends whether I pick Karanak, Bloodletters, or the Hounds. So the Hounds are leadership seven. Karanak okay. is leadership eight. Yeah, we'll go with the Hounds. Uh, and Bloodletters? Yeah, seven. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the hounds because they have slightly more wounds. So purge soul, I'm gonna pick this as the uh, unit. See if it goes off. That is a cox dice. This is why we use Gobrush. brush. So it's eight. It goes off on a nine. So do you wish to attempt to dispel? Yeah. Cool. So you need a ten or more. Nope. So it goes off. Can I use one of my? Of command course points? you can. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm not evil. Oh no, no I didn't know if I could. That was my. Oh, I am evil as well. And that I reroll one dice, not Just both. one dice, yeah. Because it specifically says. Nothing. So it's three, so yeah, it still goes off. So, how this works. Both controlling players roll a dice and add their respective unit's highest leadership value. So my leadership value, I can't remember what it is, but we'll look it up. So I roll a one, which is fantastic. And you roll a two. <laughs> so it needs, basically comes down to leadership. The leadership of the hounds was, what, seven? seven? And the leadership of me is nine, so you take one wound, one more wound. Can I command point that as well? Uh, no, because you've used one this turn, t uh, this uh, phase. phase. Okay, yes. so that's right. So he loses a. Yep. So Purge Soul has gone off. He can cast another one. He's going to cast Smite. Smite will be going into, and just need to figure out who the closest model is. So we have roughly nine inches and nine inches. So I think that means I can just pick. So I'm going to pick Karanak. Cool. Smite goes off on a six. He's already denied two. No, he's denied one. They denied one. He's denied oh, okay. One. So you've got, essentially got one more. So you need to deny on a seven because it's plus one to mine. Uh, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's denied. And finally, this squad of Grey Knights just here is going to target the Blood Letters or has to because they're the closest unit. Goes off Ooh. on... It does, makes literally no difference because it's always three. So three of those models are dead. That is the end of my psychic phase. Grey Knights and all their psychic dice. Don't you love it? Right, I'm going to show you the shooting over this side and then we're going to summarise the rest because it's very, very samey. Starting out with the Grandmaster and Nemesis Dread Knight armour, he is going to target the Hounds because his weapon does two damage and they have two wounds a pop, so it makes more sense for him to pound it into there. Starting out with the Heavy Incinerator, they're both shooting at him, but the Heavy Incinerator, D6 for four. They are Strength 6, the toughness of the Hounds is four, so it's wounding on threes. So we have three wounds. Um, It'll just be your five up invulnerable save, yeah. So it basically one dies and another one dies. The wounds don't carry over. So there you go. And then the heavy side cannon is six shots. So I'm going to be hitting on twos and I get to re-roll ones because of the Grandmaster ability. Do not need it. Again, this is going to be wounding on... Oh, sorry. Toughness is four, isn't it? Yeah. Wounding on threes. So it's that many... Um, Five plus invuln saves. Cool. Should be able to wipe these guys out. Oh, just, just. So that's the hounds done uh, because they are two wounds a pop. Ah, uh, okay. Um, next up, these guys here are going to be firing at the blood letters now because they're rapid fire two. The ones in rapid fire range are firing four shots each. This guy here is just out of rapid fire range though. So here are my storm bolt shots. I'm one dice short, so I need to roll one extra dice at the end of this. Hitting on threes, I'm re-rolling ones because I'm within the Ori ability for the uh, commander. That's a lot of twos though, which I cannot re-roll. Okay, and then we needed an extra dice for the one I was missing. So these have all hit. Strength four, your toughness is four, so four's to wound. It's three, I believe. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, blood letters are three. Three's to wound in that case. Just double check. Yes. Cool, so it's that many five plus saves. Uh, so three die, basically. That might be enough to do some damage in the morale phase. All the shooting over here is exactly the same in terms of their abilities, pretty much. So I'm gonna summarize a lot of what's happening over here. Okay, quick summary over here. Um, this squad of Grey Knights shot at the Blood Letters. Um, I managed to wipe out all bar two. The um, 
Grandmaster, I wanted to aim at Karanak, but unfortunately he wasn't the closest model because two of those guys remained. Therefore, I had to plow the additional shots into them to get rid of them. Could have waited for the um, morale phase, but it was kind of pointless. These guys shot Karanak and we've taken two wounds off him. And these purifiers shot at the uh, hounds and did no wounds, unfortunately. So that's all the shooting over there. Okay, and down here, um, all my incinerators are out of range, but my storm bolt as were. These three guys fire at him, noting you're hitting on threes and then wounding on sixes, and then Sam has a three plus save. I managed to do three wounds with storm bolts. Three wounds with storm bolts. Um, and then unfortunately purifies here, nothing. So the Warhound Titan has lost five wounds in total this turn, taking him down to 30. At 29, his profile starts to reduce, i.e. his ballistic skill gets worse, his void shield gets worse, all that kind of stuff. However, looking at the board, I have made a fairly big dent on, um, on the rest of Sam's capabilities. I am gonna see if we can do some charges. There's no overwatches, so I'm just gonna roll for them. Grandmaster here into the blood letters, needing nine inches. Got an eight, so it fails. He he does have first of the fray, which allows him to re-roll because he's the warlord. So re-rolling. Nope. And then these grey knights here, I might as well charge in. I think we need about nine or ten. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, we will measure that. Oh no, you might just no, be out. I think I'm just out. Yeah. Literally just out. Again, I do get to re-roll for first of the fray. I have to re-roll both dice, don't have a choice in the fact. No, they fail, that's fine. And then over here, we lose absolutely nothing by charging the purifiers in, because there's no sort of overwatch. So purifiers needing nine inches, we get eight. So unfortunately they have failed. There's no sort of re-roll. And this squad of Grey Knights just here is charging Karanak, needing nine inches. They are in. So moving those guys in. Uh, I am going to show you this combat, just because Karanak is a close combat -y type model. Hitting on threes, no sorts of re-rolls. Wounding on fives, so I do get to re-roll as I'm a demon hunter. Nice Oof. for the reroll on the three. Whoa! Whoa! So three five plus saves. He has four wounds left, so he's still going to survive. But yeah, so he's down to two, two wounds. That's pretty good going. Yeah, that's nasty. That is. Uh, but then obviously he gets his attacks back. So Karanak has four attacks now. If he charges, is charged, or performs a heroic intervention, he gets plus one strength. Uh, he gets plus one strength and plus one attack at the end of the turn. Oh, so you don't get it. No, I, I had a quick re read of it and it basically says uh, if a corn demon unit with this ability either charges, is charged, or performs a heroic intervention, add one to the strength and attacks characteristic of all models in the unit at the end of the turn. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Interesting. So he's just normal now. Yeah, so he's normal now, but it could increase if he survives another turn. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, so four attacks hitting on twos. Yeah, nice. Oh, two ones. And then winning on, what's his strength? Uh, his strength is five. So yeah, winning on threes. Two wounds, minus AP. Uh, minus two AP and two damage. Cool, so it's five ups. Passing one, one fail, so it's just two wounds to one guy. So one guy is gonna die. There you go. Cool. Um, that's that. I can take a morale test, but I literally can't fail it. There you go, done. Um, do we have any more morale tests? We do have a morale test for the blood letters in the corner, in the top left, to show you this quickly. So over there, up in this corner here, so Sam, if you want to roll in Guybrush for their morale test, see how many more die if they do. So the leadership seven, six died in the... So seven, eight. eight. So eight is the result of that dice roll, essentially, and their leadership is... Seven. So one extra dies Oof. as a result of morale. Cool. Uh, that is the end of Grey Knight's turn one, slightly longer than the Demon's turn. Um, and it hasn't been bad in terms of the amount of damage done to the Demons. I wiped out nearly, well probably not 500 points actually, but a majority of the rest of Sam's army for getting the Titan is gone, which is good. Um, my plan for the Purifiers, which I'll talk about at the end, didn't come to fruition, which would have been the hardest hitting thing. Um, and I'm now going to struggle as a result of that. But in terms of my objectives, we secured Psychic Communion, and that is for two points. It would be D3, but as I discussed at the start, it's slightly different as per the game. So that's two for that. We have also secured Objective 6, so that's one VP for that, taking us up to three. Additionally, at the end of my turn, Sam secured Defend Objective 3, 
So he has an additional two VPs for that, which then allowed him to draw an extra card. So uh, Sam's cards for this turn are Domination, which is never gonna happen, Behind Enemy Lines, and Assassinate. So in terms of Demons, turn two, Sam, movement. We'll start over this side, what's happened? So the Flesh Hounds over here have moved up towards this squad over here. I did think about sort of moving over towards that direction, maybe going towards the actual objective marker, but I want to play like Corn would play, so we just want blood. So we've come over here towards this Purifier squad. Correct. Yeah, I've got the name right. Hold on. Uh, Karanax obviously stuck in this combat. Rex has moved over here. 24 inch move is massive. It's ridiculous. It's, especially considering his base is what? Like nine, 10 inches maybe? Maybe even more. Um, it means that his effective movement is even more than that because when he moves forward, he still has a toe backwards essentially. It's really, really good. And like, it's probably worth mentioning, I haven't based him for, uh, for benefit or anything like that. He's based yeah. as minimal as he could possibly be so yeah, that yeah. I don't do like cheeky dick moves and stuff like that. Yeah. Apart from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, so that's that, he's moved over there, and then over here, you, um, you're sacrificing your, your blood letters. Yeah, I mean, the amount of firepower that you throw down, as well as the psychic abilities, uh, they do a minus three towards your saves in close combat, so I thought I may as well go in against the big guy. Back in seventh edition, they probably wouldn't have been a good uh, thing to throw in against him because of the fact they're AP3, not AP2, but because uh, it affects the save now. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's probably a more ballsy move. And you know what? He's your warlord as well. So yeah. they're going to die. I just oh, need yeah, to see if I can take some stuff out. It's if they get in as well, because you haven't got any incinerator. But if they get in, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You never know. Right, okay. So shooting. I'm basically, I'm going to summarize. Shooting, the only thing is Rex. You've seen how Rex works. You've seen the dicey rolls. I'm just going to summarize what he does. And we'll also summarize the combat as well. So Rex has fired his flamer weapon at the strike squad and his plasma gun at the uh, Grand Master. Flamer absolutely annihilated the um, Grey Knight squad. However, the Nemesis Dread Knight has survived taking only one wound as it were. Essentially it's done four damage, but only one of those got through thanks to his awesome four plus invulnerable save. Sam even spent a command point to make sure that he did a little bit more damage on that. Um, so yeah, that's that over there. Thank God we still have the Nemesis Dread Knight in the game. And he's in a position whereby you can probably charge Rex. Actually, I don't want to charge Rex. That's right, Rex is going to charge him. Oh <laughs> no. Okay, so he's dead anyway, but he's alive for now. Um, cool, so that's that. And then we'll sum... Well, that's all the shooting, actually. So it's just like overwatches and charges, really. Yeah. Do you want to start over here? These yeah. guys charging here? So yeah, those flesh hounds are going to charge into your purifier squad. Cool, I am going to show you the incinerators on overwatch because they can do a fair amount of damage. 2d6, it's d6 each for a total of five automatic hits. Strength six, their toughness is four, so it's three to wound. They all wound, so it's five, five plus invulnerable saves. Um, and they do <laughs> one damage each. One damage each, right. Come on, lads. Five plus. So one dies, one loses a wound. So I'm going to take it from there and then I'll put the. Yeah. And then we do have some storm bottles coming in. We have three storm bottles. They're in rapid fire range, so it's firing four shots each. They're going to be hitting on sixes, no type of rerolls, so sixes. We just have the one hit. Wounding on a four, no. See if you're in, well, I mean, you're in, you can't fail, so we'll just move those guys in. Cool. And then I assume Blood Letters charging into the <laughs> <Yeah>. Grandmaster. <laughs> so again, we have some Overwatch, including a heavy incinerator this time. So the heavy incinerator, D6 for four. Cool. It's strength six, your toughness is only three, so we're only on twos. So four, five plus invon saves. Enough to wipe them out. Come on, lads. Can't do it, mate, you're gonna fail. Yep. yep. <laughs> Ultimate fail. Die as they charge in. So we will summarize the combats over this side. You've seen how Karanak performs. I might show you a little bit of the hounds, but yeah, we'll get over to those combats. We are gonna see how the flesh hounds perform in close combat, because we haven't seen them yet. So they're attacking first as they charged. Cool, so they're gonna be hitting on threes. Yep. Fairly good, only two misses. Uh, and then they are strength four, so they're gonna be winning on fours. Yep. Do they have any minus to their AP? As in my AP? Uh, minus one. That's cool. So fours to wound, three wounds, and I get three four plus saves, it's minus one AP. 
Uh, so losing two. I'm actually going to drop. Do I drop? No, I'm going to keep the incinerators in there, I think. So we're going to lose him and we're going to lose him. Cool. Uh, my purifiers are going to strike back, actually. We will film this. They have halberds instead of swords, which has a slightly different profile. Although I just removed... I did this the wrong... I, I removed the wrong things, but I've done it, so we'll stick with it. So, melee weapons. We have one guy with a halberd. It's plus one strength, minus two, and it does D3 damage. So the Knight of the Flame is the guy who is remaining. He has two attacks, hitting on threes, both hit. It's plus two. Was it plus two or plus one? I've forgotten. Either way, we're only on threes. Two wounds, five plus invuln saves, and then we'll do D3 damage each. So D3 damage. Well, yeah, just one dice. He's already down to one wound. And then I have the other two. They don't have any special weapons or anything like that. Hitting on threes, wounding on fours. Nope. End of that combat. Cool, a Karanak we will summarize. I have realized last turn I did something very, very wrong uh, and I apologize, you probably already commented on it. Um, four swords do D3 damage in the last turn I worked on the assumption that they did one each, didn't I? Did I roll D3 for each? I don't think I did, either way I'm running at this now. Only does one, so he's dead. Oh, okay. Oh, so did you just take a wound off? Yeah, I've already taken a wound oh, off. Oh, fine, in that case he's still alive with one wound. Yay, oh. Yeah, oh god, I forgot about this. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't even go through this on the um, charging bit, guys. Sorry. So, uh, Rex is charging the um, Nemesis Dreadnought over there. I'm going <laughs> to see if I can shoot him as he charges in with my incinerator. So, D6 for 5. That's nice, good. Need that. Strength is 6. Toughness is like nine. 10. 9. Okay, so 5's to wound. We have... 3 wounds. 3 wounds. And I have a moderately good profile. So the profile on Heavy Incinerator, minus one, so you get a four plus save, but it does two damage each. So three, four plus saves. Three, four plus saves. Here we go. Oh, he passes all of them. That would have taken him to his lower profile as well. So see if you get in. Oh, you can't really fail, can you? No, not really. Not really, no. So yeah, he's in. Cool, so hitting you with four attacks. Yeah, we will see what he's like in close combat. Yeah. So he's got Titanic Stride and his ability is mate, so make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. Nice, so it's basically times three on your attacks. So I'm hitting with 12 attacks. Are you using all of your attacks on that weapon? I suppose that's his only weapon, isn't it? I don't know why I wouldn't, because... I suppose you could buy a melee weapon, could you, for him? Not on this one. Oh, fair enough, yeah. weird. That all makes right. sense, right? That's not me being stupid. It just seems too good to not do it. Uh, it is five to hit, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... his. Weapon skill, which matches that of 7th, is that their weapon skill is pretty rubbish. Fair enough. Fives. Fair amount. Oh, actually quite a lot of fives there. This is the strength of it. So strength 10. Oh, nice. So you're wounding on threes. <sighs> How many damage a pop? Three damage a pop. And that also it's minus AP? Minus three. So it goes to a five plus. He has a four plus in bond save. So they're four plus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that scared the crap out of you. Yeah. Right, so I knocked that four. I have lost four. And how many damage a pop? Three damage each. So four times 12. three is 12. He is dead. Woo! Cool. So Go he on. did. His time had come. It's like Final Destination. It's happened. So Ironically, what? Rex did more damage in combat, considering he's a shooty titan, than he did with shooting. He did. That is true. Well, against the Dread Knight, anyway. Yeah. So he'd have to move in, and then he can consolidate. We have to consolidate three inches towards the closest uh, enemy model. So essentially, he'd shift to here. Yeah. In terms cool. of objectives okay. on Demon's turn two, behind enemy lines, you do not have. Assassinate, however, you have secured. You have killed one character. Um, so that takes you up to five. Domination is the one I need all the objectives, isn't it? It is. Oh, we'll discard that one. Cool, that's discarded. Moving on to Grey Knight's turn two. Okay, Grey Knights turn two. I'll be honest, I'm kind of happy with my draw. We have Secure Objective 2, Rites of Exorcism. The way that this card works, Sam gets to pick an objective. Uh, he chooses it. If I secure that on the turn he chooses it, it's D3, which, as per the rules for Second Confrontation, changes to 2. And then we have Secure Objective 5. So, looking at the board, 2 is just here in my control. Five is in the middle, which I can get with Gate of Infinity. 
and the one that he chose for Rite of Exorcism is this one here, which is currently in control of Karanak. However, you can just see the Sword of a Grey Knight here, I'll just show you, he is there. Um, he was locked in combat with Karanak, which would have been an issue because there was a chance he could die in his turn, but he's fallen back, so because he has objective secured, he controls that objective. He is now not at threat of dying in um, the combat phase, so that's going to give me that objective. Giving me a fairly healthy haul already, if that psychic power goes off, of one, two, three, four, although I can only secure two cards a turn actually, so probably three points this turn. Um, the so Grey Knight just here is going to cast Smite on Karanak, so it goes off on uh, 10, so you need 11 to beat it on two dice, just roll here. So if he rolls 11, it denies it. Nope, so it goes off, it does D3 mortal, no sorry, it does three mortal wounds. I'm going to use a command point. Okay, we roll on the two. So we've got a six and a two at present. Yep. No, that's a one. So Karanak is dead, giving me Slay the Warlord, which is very, very nice. Ooh. Boom. The Purifiers are going to cast Smite onto the Hounds. So see if we get it off, we get it off with a nine plus one because they are Grey Knights. So you can deny goes. with a ten. And it's going to do D6 wounds because they're purifiers. So now it goes off. D6 wounds. One. <laughs> Brilliant. So, one goes so it does one. Uh, that's that over there. And then I see, uh, I kind of want to cast Gate of Infinity to get on to objective five. But I can only uh, score two cards anyway so it's kind of pointless in a way so I don't think I'm gonna do it yet because there's no point in me risking it although if I get over there Sam's gonna kill me anyway I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with it for now I think that's it I'm pretty uh, sure I forgot to mention that in this corner of the board there's been a very slight bit of movement warlords over there and then these guys over here I am gonna cast sanctuary on the warlord over there I'll just roll down here very quickly so Sanctuary, see if we get it off. Goes off with a nine, so yeah, nothing's in range to dispel it, so he has a three plus in vulnerable save now. Literally just filming this for the lols. Stormbottle into Rex. Fives. No, never mind, forget that. Okay, moving on to uh, close combat, we're gonna summarize this combat between the purifiers and the hounds. Over here, no wounds done either side, just utter boredom. Um, okay, that's the end of Grey Knight's turn two. So for points, this turn has been quite a good haul. I did make a minor error I want to highlight. So I got four, up to four because I killed the Warlord. Rites of Exorcism for two, takes me up to six. And then Secure Objective two, which is just above here. It's the one I showed you at the start. Gives me an additional one, so it puts me up to seven. So it's a fairly good haul, right? However, what I should have done you know when I had that little discussion with myself about trying to shift onto objective five using Gate of Infinity, I should have done that. Um, basically, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, but Sam can now move on to it and stop me getting it next turn. However, two is too far for him to do anything about, so I should have captured five this turn and then left two for the turn afterwards. The reason is I can only score two cards as per the second confrontation rules pack. Very, very tiny thing, but it will would have cost me an additional point, which at the end of the game can make quite a big difference. That, however, is the end of Grey Knight's turn two. We should get over to Demon's turn three. Okay, turn three for the Demon. Secure objective three, supremacy behind enemy lines. It doesn't look like Sam's gonna secure any of these. Objective three, just so you're aware, is here. Movement, very, very simple. Sam, talk us through that thing. <laughs> Rex has just come up over here. Uh, basically, it's come down to that fact of I want to just start trying to kill stuff. Yeah. And Rex is my only chance of trying to kill this bad boy, whether that's through combat or just through sheer weight of fire. So I need to make the decision of whether I want to fire all weapons at him and possibly charge him, or whether I just want to fire one weapon at this squad because the flamer tends to be quite good at getting rid of Oh, the flamer will wipe them out, guaranteed. But with the three up invuln, yeah. It makes the plasma not so easy to score the win. That's cool. Yeah, that's true. Um, right, we're going to summarise because all this stuff you've seen before, it's basically shooting and charge over here and then we've got the combat over there because they're still locked in. But we'll summarise what's happening. 
So Sam decided to put everything, Plasma and Flamer, into the Grand Master. And two wounds got through, but unfortunately did four damage each. The four plus, the, sorry, the three plus invulnerable save I got as a result of Sanctuary is, invulner is invaluable. I can speak <laughs> words. Um, but yeah, he's probably gonna charge him in a second, but it's a very long charge, essentially, because he's gotta get down three across a few inches, so you're looking at a fair Seven amount. Uh, yeah, something like that. So you got one, two. So it's a six inch five. charge, so three, yeah. So Nine five. inches, yeah. Um, so it's a fairly long charge. Do you want to do that now? There's nothing else to do, is there? Yeah, sure. Let's cool. do the charge. So do you want to do your overwatch? Yep. Unfortunately, my overwatch, I got a few wounds through with both the incinerator and the heavy side cannon, but he can use his void shield instead of in invulnerable save or any other save. Uh, we might have gotten that wrong earlier in the battle report, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so, actually. But um, essentially, no wounds on Rex. Let's see if Rex is in. So if we roll next to the statue, it's about here, yeah. So we need a nine. We need a nine. Well, we don't need a nine. We don't need, we don't want a nine. A nine is what you require. You guys can't see this, I'm looking longingly into John's eyes. It's true. As I roll the dice. It's true. <gasps> I'm gonna use command point. Seven, last one. Last command point. Last command point's it gone. so crucial. Spending it on the three. Here we go. Oh, oh he doesn't make six. it. He does not make it. Sam is out of command points, and the, for the first turn, Rex hasn't killed anything. There's been no, no nothing. And we're Important. gonna summarize the combat just here. So I have lost one purifier. Purifiers have done nothing back, unfortunately. In terms of points for Sam, um, nothing is secured. Are you discarding any of these? Uh, yeah, which supremacy is literally impossible. Yeah, so let's, just, let's discard supremacy. Perhaps, uh, yeah, the supremacy is the only one that's impossible. So yeah, there you go. Right, moving over to Grey Knights, turn three. It's another good haul for the Grey Knights. We might be in this, despite Rex still being on the board. We have Advance, which is um, basically none of my units in my deployment zone. Currently, there's only one squad in. Uh, mission Critical Objective, you roll a dice f to see which um, Objective needs to take, and I rolled a four. And then we have secure objective five. So these are the only guys in my deployment zone. They're gonna use Gate of Infinity to get to objective number five. Over here, objective five is being controlled by the Grey Knight you can just see over there. And that's that's pretty much that. To be fair. It's casting Smite on the Hounds. Goes off. You can attempt to deny. You need five, six, one, eight, nine. You need so ten or more to deny. Uh, nope, so it still goes off. Uh, so he needs to beat my roll, and it's plus one because I'm a Grey Knight. Mm -hmm. D6, two, so one wound there, and he's down to one wound. Cool. And then the next dude, Smite, goes off. Oof. Uh, three damage, so another one dies. So... Uh, oh, actually dice. it's three damage. Yeah. It carries over because they're mortal wounds. So yeah, two die. That is the squad. That's the squad done. So we now <laughs> only have Rex on the board. Next up, Gate of Infinity with a tasking value of six. Close off on eight, cannot be denied. These guys, with the magic of editing. Shh, ding. Again, please subscribe to my channel. Over here we have some smites. So, actually, Grandmaster's cast his Sanctuary on himself. Goes off on a, oh, it goes off on six, but does it need seven? It has a casting value of six, so it has gone off. He has Sanctuary, there's nothing to deny. It. He's gonna cast Smite. Goes off again, so Rex has taken one more wound. You need a four plus, Sam. I need to take him down to that lesser profile, ah. yes. So he's now on his lesser profile. He's starting to diminish. These guys here are also gonna cast Smite. Goes off, is a Perils though. I'm gonna take the Perils. Um, it doesn't increase because it's, because of Rights of Banishment, it's a modified Smite. But yeah, another four plus shield. Oh, your Void Shield decreases. Goes down to five plus, does it? Yes, it goes to a five now. Cool, so five plus. Ah. Yes, he's lost another wound, two wounds, bring it. And I'm also gonna do some shooting that will summarize. And I've managed to do one more additional wound onto Rex from Stormbolt to fire. The Stormbolt is the most effective thing against him, I swear to God. Okay, end of my turn, I can secure, t I have done all of these, but I can only take two of them. I'm gonna take Mission Critical Objective for four, which gives me D3, which turns to two. So that's taken me up to nine. And then secure objective five. So I am now on 10 victory points. Advance, I have secured, but I can't claim it yet. 
we're going to keep it because I can easily claim that. It's not dependent on anything else really. So I should easily get it at the end of my next turn. Currently storming ahead. However, we don't know when the game's going to end. And although Rex's profile has changed, he can. He still has the possibility of wiping me off the board. In terms of objectives again, it's not great. So Grey Knights are putting ahead. Secure objective three, objective three, and behind enemy lines. So um, in terms of movement, Sam is going for the Grandmaster over there to slay the Warlord. His movement has decreased to 18, so objective three is just down here. He wouldn't have been able to make it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, he's up here. We will summarize everything that goes on over here because it's you know what's happening now. Rex has split his shooting. Plasma going into the Grand Master and Flamer going into the Grey Knights just down here. One guy survived down here thanks to me being in cover. I did that on purpose because I thought that was coming. However, obviously the Grand Master is finally dead. Rex can make a charge if he rolls double six against that Grey Knight. So just down here, see if we can make it double six. No. <laughs> um, that is the end of Demons. It's not even Demons anymore. It's just Titan. Rex. Just Rex. That's the, that the end of Rex's turn four. In terms of objectives, nothing has been secured. Unfortunately, we will get over to Grey Knight's turn four. In terms of movement, nothing's really happened, to be honest. Um, you've seen my cards. All I'm gonna do is down here, uh, sorry, over here, these guys here, are going to use Gate of Infinity to see if they can get on to objective two. As a warp charge value of six, uh, goes off on a six because they get plus one to their rolls. So as you can see, they have shifted over onto objective one. And that is the end of my turn. There's no charges shooting, anything like that. In terms of points, I have secured no witnesses. Uh, remove all your opponent's character models, taking me up to five. And advance no uh, of none of my units in my deployment zone, taking me up to a total of 12. I'm going to discard Blood and Guts because that ain't happening. Rex's turn five objectives, secure objective three twice and secure objective two. Objective two is just here. Objective five was, I think it's the one all the way over there if I'm correct. Oh no, sorry, objective five is this one just here. So Rex has moved just here. We'll summarize what he does. So Rex, 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 Rex. Uh, <laughs> he targeted the lone guy down by that objective with his Flamer. Yes. And then he targeted his plasma at these guys here. Only killed two purifiers with the plasma. Obviously obliterated the guy on his own. Charged into combat with the purifiers down here. Only did one, killed one model. Yep. He just rolled really, really badly. So essentially I still have little things dotted around the place. No objectives secured. Nothing. Can't so, secure them at the moment. No, exactly, yeah. So he had objective three twice and objective two, but none of them. We'll move over to Grey Knight's turn five. Okay, summary of the whole turn. We have Deeds of Legend, which is kill a character or monster. Teleport attack. Kill something with a unit's coming from Deep Strike. Use teleport or Gate of Infinity. And no prisoners, which is kill an enemy unit. Obviously, they're all very killy based and Rex is not going to die anytime soon. So, not going to happen. In terms of movement, I have left the dude over there in combat with Rex. He will die if it continues, if it doesn't continue. Oh no, I suppose we're locked in combat. Can you pull him out like an inch? So now we're not locked in combat, but um, he still claims the objective. That is part of the Eternal War objective. So that's all good over there. Um, down here, they're controlling that Eternal War objective. And I used Gate of Infinity to put some purifiers up in that top corner to give me the line breaker. That is essentially the end of my turn. There is no shooting or anything like that. Um, I haven't secured any objectives. I do get to roll to see if the game continues. And because I roll, I've been saving a command point just in case. Um, so because I roll, I get to use that command point if I wish. Three plus, see if the game continues. Game ends. Oh. GG. That is it. <coughs> so Sam, a very, very good game. Um, we will talk about it at great length, but thank you very much. Cheers, man. Appreciate that. That was good. So that is the end of the game. Um, 
I I thoroughly enjoyed that. Actually. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I I liked it because, and this is usually when I like games, we were each playing a different game. If that made sense. Yeah. Like to begin with, I thought that either one of us could have gotten enough cards. I did get very lucky on cards, I'll be honest. <laughs> Um, but either one of us could have gone off that and I thought you would probably win by tabling me yeah. and then towards the end it did come down to that kind of if you table me you win, if I stay alive I win like it started to get more and more like that throughout the game um, I think the thing that really made a difference especially in those last turns is dropping me to that one wound into the next bracket on starts to add up yeah, yeah like the five up void shield. I then rolled a four, the next void shield I need to make, which meant yeah. that I failed it. So I went down again and it's little things like that. The movement went down and the mm -hmm. uh, needing threes to hit, like it made quite a big difference. It does, it definitely does. His movement was the biggest shocker. Yeah. When I first, when you said you were bringing him and we discussed bringing him, we knew we was, you were bringing the hound. I was yeah. quite happy about it to be fair. Um, I, um, I thought his war hound is going to be like really really shoot he's gonna kill a lot of stuff ridiculous range but he'll be slow he'll move 12 a turn yeah. and then i looked up his profile and it said 24 and i was like whoa <laughs> and then with his massive footprint that 24 is actually effectively more than 24 so he is very he could be wherever he wanted to be really yeah. like it helped having that nice little avenue in the middle to just go right i need to do something at the front right i need to do something at the back yeah and just keep moving back and forwards it was very good but yeah. i I, I don't know if I did the right thing, I assume I did because it kind of worked. I I knew that I wouldn't be able to get close to you. So the the primary um, way that this army works, and this isn't the army I'm taking to the second confrontation tournament, but elements of it are the same. So the Land Raider with the three squads of purifiers and Castellan Crow is like the foundation of the list I'm taking to second confrontation. The whole way that works is it's one drop, so you have essentially five units. Yeah, so you've got three purifiers, Castellan and Land Raider. Five drops in one, because you can put them in the transport when you drop them. Um, then you cast Gate of Infinity on that Land Raider, turn one, and you place it right in front of your opponent, and they have to deal with it, or the purifiers get out and um, can do essentially 4d6 mortal wounds in smite that turn, and then they have their incinerators. When they're in close range, they are brutal. Um, and the idea is that they're in the land raider because land raiders are hard to kill. You killed the land raider with one gun. Just w like you split your firepower and killed it with one gun. So I don't think that is going to be common, but that shocked me. And then to win without that trick, which is what the whole list is based around, I was quite happy with. Like the purifiers did nearly nothing because they never got close enough to really do anything. But um, I think me spreading out over the whole battlefield Massively. was better than me just sticking in one little area. You see, I think my problem was the complete opposite. I I was like, well, I'm going to have to deploy first, so I spread everything out to try and scare you. Maybe putting everything next to each other would have been a better idea. I think maybe you're right, because then I would have sort of intuitively done that myself. Yeah. Try to, because my goal was from the get-go, kill everything in your army except for the Warhound. Yep speeds up the game but it also means that um there's just less for me to worry about like i just have to focus on the, it's one model i have to think about um and yeah it just maybe it would have been easy for you to wipe me out if that was the case if i was all clumped up in one area if you look at the points on the table you you won on that front like the warhound titan is worth 1500 points true at the end of that game i probably had about there were units that were down to like one or two models, quite yeah. a few units. So I was probably only on about like 700 points. So you probably wiped out the equivalent amount with the Titan. Yeah. If it was Purge the Alien, you, you probably, you would have won. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately it's objective based. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, what did you think? Like, have you used, you haven't used them in eighth, obviously. No, so a, a, it's probably worth mentioning that my channel is a Horus Heresy yes, only channel, yeah. uh, which I can't remember if we've discussed at all today, on we camera have. at least. Uh, at the very start of the back Oh, there you go. It. So, such a long time ago. It was a while um, ago. So, for me, 8th is a, a very new thing, and John and I have discussed it at length about me only really playing 8th when I'm around him and the Visicast boys, and mm -hmm. it, it was fun. Like I, 
and it's probably worth mentioning as well that it's not a, I refuse to play eighth. It's m all my money is invested in heresy, so I'm yeah. going to go wherever the heresy rules go. If they go to eighth, fantastic. If they stick with seventh, fantastic. I know the rule set. I'm not too fussed. But at no point during this g during today did I feel like I was having a crap game. No. Like it was fun. Like yeah, because it was. yeah, you killed all my demons and stuff. But I was like, I can guarantee that I can at least kill stuff. Yeah, which yeah. sometimes you go for a whole turn of killing nothing. Yeah, I didn't necessarily wipe out full squads on the whole turn, but. Yeah, it was quite fun, especially killing that first Dread Knight. I felt a little bit invincible. Yeah. Like, with Rex, with the rest of the army, I knew that was going. Yeah, oh but yeah, yeah. That was... I was like, yeah, this is going well. And it took you so long to get me down to that bracket where everything changed for my profile. Yeah. Which helped me massively. There is a very small chance that if we would have milked two more turns, I don't know if it was possible, I had one, two, did I have four or five squads left? Either way, there was a small chance that if it went on to turn seven, Sam would have tabled me, mm. which is why I saved the command uh, dice to make sure that I could end the turn, end the game as quickly as possible. Because that was how you—that was your win condition. Your win condition was wipe me off the table, and mine was just to keep one model alive. So those times where you wiped out a squad all bar one model must have been really frustrating. Because yeah. those one models, when you have to plow in loads of five out of one model, you like. Ah, uh, this could be going to you elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, the ones in the woods, that really annoyed me. But not yeah. because you did anything, it was more yeah, of just yeah, like yeah. A, oh, I, just I put them in the... I knew you were going to shoot them, so I was like, plus one to their cover save, that might make that tiny bit of difference. And it did. And it did, because so, one model survived. Did you film the cover saves from that? I can't remember. I don't think I did. But it came down to uh, threes and fives, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, that all my dice were, yeah. And the fives were what saved you, and I was mm -hmm. just sat there going, yeah, literally just, um, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, is there anything else you want to add? Like, it's just very fun. I had a it very. Was. It probably to people watching, it might seem like the weirdest matchup in the world. So I currently don't have two thousand points worth of eighth edition stuff that I can readily yeah. grab that isn't Space Wolves. And you've already got guys coming on here and playing Space Wolves at the moment. Yeah, quite and a few. I don't want to saturate it with more Space Wolves yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was a simple case of, I texted John and said, right, I can't make 2,000 points, what do you want to do? And then basically I turned around and said, I could bring Rex, and you went, do it. Yeah. So, and... Well, he, to be fair, he's red, he fits in with... Because we were using the Chaos, Chaos round, 400 Titan, rules. so it fits as a Chaos army, it's a legal army, it's just... And the fact that he looks red, it tied in quite yeah. nicely, I thought it looked quite good. So. I really enjoyed playing it, it was something very different. It has given me that little urge to book in with you more as well yeah, to play, play more, more games. Sam. I've been wanting to get Sam on the channel again for ages because he's a legend. When was the last time but, um, came on? Uh, it, it was last edition. You haven't played this edition. Was it against Noel when we did Tau versus Imperial Guard? Probably. And yeah. Yeah, probably. It's been a long time. Um, we've mentioned it before, but Sam is part of the Emperor's Path. There's a community page on Facebook, which is quite nice. It's pleasant, I would say. Yeah. It's one of the better, more pleasant groups. Um, so you can join that. Do you want me to promote that? Do you want me to? Yeah, by all means. Okay, do join it. Um, and then YouTube channel, which will be linked below, uh, which is, as we again mentioned before, 30K content. We don't do 30K content, so if you're into 30K, make sure you do check that out. Uh, Sam's a very nice guy. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you guys can like, comment, subscribe on this video, share it with your friends, let people know about the VisiCast, that would be fantastic. But that is pretty much it. Make sure you watch some of our other battle reports. That's it. Bye-bye.